The Star Crusader Fighter Combat Simulator is the most advanced and realistic pilot training package ever created for the Alliance Navy. Flight control, battle strategies, and combat tactics are realistic and perfectly suited to the latest generation of military hardware. The simplified Star Crusader public platform is a prized recruitment tool capable of isolating those perfectly suited to space combat. While retaining only some of the main system's functionality, it has a proven track record in training and identifying candidates for future fighter pilots. The Star Crusader Simulation The Battle of Retribution Pull up, pull up. The computer's voice was incredibly calm, yet equally assertive. Each word became louder, forcing Nate to act before it was too late. He pulled on the control column and narrowly missed hitting the stern of the Alliance cruiser ANS Farragut. His stomach tightened as he expected to feel the impact, and then he was through. That was close. A bright flash to the left marked the death of an enemy fighter. Nate instinctively pulled hard left and spun his fighter around to avoid more fire from a second fighter. His wingman took the shot and cut the fighter apart in a single devastating volley. Good shooting, Hornet 5. Close up! The fighters rejoined their formation and altered course to take them away from the nearby biomech battleship. Streaks of projectiles fired almost continually from the powerful ship, making it deadly to approach. The enemy ship surged forward with its engines on full burn. Another volley struck from the other direction, and Nate put his fighter bomber into a long roll. He spotted the battered hull of the Alliance ship as the crew... Since escaping the ambush by the Biotai, contact had been made with remnants of the Alliance fleet. Though scattered, those still capable of high-speed travel were supposed to be meeting here, under the command of Admiral Churchill. As Nate looked out at the wreckage, he wondered if they had arrived too late. This area was relatively unimportant in the scheme of things. There were no planets to inhabit and no asteroids to harvest for their resources. No ship would have ever traveled to this remote part of the Arno's cluster had it not been for the space bridge. This massive tear in space-time was a rare celestial phenomenon that allowed instantaneous space travel between two points in space. This space bridge was one of only a handful in the Empire that connected back to the outer territories of the Helion Nexus. Once through, they would be a few weeks from civilization amongst the worlds of the Alliance. Relentless Crusader Three reporting in. This place is a junkyard. I've got nothing but wreckage out here and no sign of the fleet. What are your orders? The delay was short, and as always, the face of Lieutenant Higgins popped up as his direct link to the ship. Follow the secondary scouting path. I'm sending out two more birds as backup. We might be close to the rift, but we're still a long way from home. Understood. Crusader 3 out. Nate waggled his wings and then dived down to move in the direction of the next series of waypoints. The orb scanner showed Relentless had taken up a position within a clear bubble of space in front of the rift entrance. There was no chance of a ship sneaking up on her without her escort fighters or sensors spotting them first. He made small adjustments as they traveled along three more waypoints. As the minutes ticked by, it became clearer that whatever had happened was now well in the past. Relentless, there are no signs of life out here. Looks like we missed the fight. They're scouting. Look at their last course change. They've already crossed through here before, probably in the last few hours. They are following a classic search pattern, and it won't be long before they've spotted the ships. Cassandra sighed. And they are too small to be out here on their own. Let's go. The suggestion was unnecessary, because Commander Higgins had already given them three waypoints to follow before reaching the target. As they reached cruising speed, they were already five kilometers away and still accelerating. Both craft were capable of higher speed, but to do so required either more time or the use of their burners. They had no surplus time, and the burners would make them easy to pinpoint against the coolness of space. What do you think? Hit them right away? Nate considered her words, but Commander Higgins interrupted before he could say what he was thinking. Boys have picked up multiple faint energy signatures for major support vessels moving into position. Six plus ships, and they are decelerating on a course that will take them past our current position. Nate shook his head. We have to hit the scouts before they can send word we're here. Agreed, said Cassandra. New waypoints popped up on their helmet overlays. Move to the second point and drop your speed. If they turn away, leave them. If they move any closer, you will need to stop them, said Commander Higgins. We're on it, said Nate. With little more than a gentle blip on the controls, the two fighters moved off to the right and continued their acceleration to the next marked waypoint. 
As they continued onwards, Nate began tagging the fighters and started to calculate optimal firing ranges and angles. Once alerted, the more agile Biotai fighters would split apart and make their job that much more difficult. Almost there, be ready, said Cassandra. The two sat in silence, following the preset course and barely straying more than a few centimeters. They were still inside the marked zone when another alert flashed. What the hell? Nate yelled. Battleship Furioso was a holy relic amongst the Biotai, and one of the only three known Legion-class battleships still in service at the time of the Revolution. Her class was designed to carry formidable weaponry suitable for prolonged engagements. Every part of her hull was covered with gilt and sculptures commissioned by each of her long-serving captains. Her long hull split apart at the bow into a pair of long booms, each flanked by feather-like membrane wings. Multiple decks revealed partially open launch decks and gun platforms, all protected by articulated and motorized armor plating. At over 500 meters in length, she was the largest ship in the Imperial Navy and carried a staggering arsenal that included no less than 4,000 crew, a company of heavily armored soldiers, eight boarding shuttles, attached assault cutters, and 18 to 40 fighters. The Wing Commander's Handbook Alliance Minefield, Fjordvige System, Deadlands, 23 December 24, 72. The rift exploded with more energy than even the most powerful ship-based weapon. White and blue arcs of energy lashed out into the blackness of space, quickly falling back into the whirlpool. No sooner had the explosion resided when a series of large ripples pulsed and flashed with barely concealed power. Incredible! Nate looked out the left side of his cockpit and watched the light show with fascination. He'd seen rifts in action before, and this was one of the many permanent distortions in space-time. Ships could use it to travel between two points. Stay alert, pilots, said Lieutenant Commander Holder. This might be the one. Nate nodded, but kept his eyes on the rift. The crackling of energy had been almost continuous for 15 minutes.